Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode four of our opportunity to try to connect with you across the universe and beyond in our learning outside the lines with Kyle and Glenn, or Glenn and Kyle, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're really excited. We've got a special guest today. We've got author Jackson Pierce, who's going to join us to talk about writing. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Glenn, what is your anecdote for the day for us? Well, I just had a really great time this morning connecting with my PLC, and that's our learning community uh, at, at our high school. So it's like um, the 10th grade language arts team that I'm a part of. Uh, you know, we, we have our normal meetings every week in person, and, you know, they're always really productive and really positive, but there was just something really special today about actually being able to interact with other adults and, um, like, actually talk via Zoom. So it was, it was probably one of the best PLC meetings we've ever had. So I just want to give a shout out to those guys and also um, just a little tip that we found really useful. We start off every, me every meeting just talking about us as humans. So like what's going on in our lives, what, how, you know, kind of are we experiencing, what kind of things have we been doing as people. So we talk about ourselves as people first and then we get into talking about our students, the learning and everything that we have to as, as part of a, an effective PLC. So it was, it was just a really good meeting and it, it kind of got the day off like on a really good note. So, yeah, I think we're seeing, I'm seeing a lot of hyperactivity, you know, I mean, in my own team and the times that we connect with one another and trying to connect, I've, I've never supported more teachers at the same time on a regular basis because of this. So I feel more connected to the teachers that I'm supposed to support than I really ever have. Um, we're all kind of in hyperactive mode. Um, speaking of which, what I'm going to share is, uh, had a virtual advisory uh, board meeting where we brought some people from outside uh, our organization as well as inside. And we've been working on an event that we call Career Connections that we do with our career academy schools that we have uh, across yeah. Gwinnett, right? So this is an opportunity for them to kind of speak to the event to try to make it better for students. And so the whole conversation today was about how do we make this an event that is worth continuing to grow for students and, and how do we continue to engage them? So that was um, really great. Oh. But they've added more and more in um, over the years that I that this platform has been around. So just some of the things that's been really effective for me is being able to have uh, a place to kind of store different documents outside of our normal like learning platform that we use like and for Gwinnett County outside of eClass. So what I like is it actually organizes things into modules for you. Uh, so that way you've I, I, like you guys, if you've watched previous episodes, I'm building a podcast with my students um, and just trying to collect some of those different resources. Google Classroom does all that for you in a way that makes things very manageable. Uh, another thing that I really like about it is we're building book groups. So I've actually used uh, Google Sheets to help students sign up for groups and I've set the permission to editable which I know is something as teachers we're oftentimes really afraid of, but if you teach students how to actually go in and be responsible, set some ground rules, build a community, then using things like Google Sheets uh, to kind of help them build groups uh, is, is like really, really successful. At least I've, I've had a lot of success with it so far just because it's not something that you have to curate. Uh, it kind of gives them the ability to do that themselves. Um, so that's been really nice. The other thing we're using Google Sheets for is just to organize their podcasts. So as we go forward with our show, Kyle, I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about just some of the different tools I'm using with that. But Google Sheets um, is a great place for them to store links to their work. So regardless of if you're, if you're doing something else besides podcasting, you can still kind of use that tool for them to collect and reflect and kind of curate their work and give you links for things that maybe they're selecting what they want to show you out of their work. Like here's the link for it. Um, and then the other thing that's kind of cool too is students can go in and look at other students' work um, to kind of give themselves some ideas. It, it's more of a community as opposed to something that's closed and uh, you know, where only the teacher is privileged with access. This is something that kind of levels the field and gives them the ability to, to experience 
what each other are doing too. Yeah, I think a lot of people are using Google Classroom right now, but just in case anybody's watching that really hasn't tapped into it, it is a really powerful tool that Google's refined over time. Yeah, uh, and uh, I really enjoyed kind of looking at the side, like how it's broken up into the, like the different books that they'll potentially be reading and connecting to. Uh, but I also like that you had a uh, Animal Crossing uh, tab on there as well, sir. Oh, yeah. well, a little bit of a teaser. That's actually what I want to talk about in our outro. So that's we'll that. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah. I love it. All right, so uh, we're going to get into kind of part two of what we do with this show, which is we something we call What's the Good Word? And in this case, we're bringing on another guest in Jackson Pierce. So I'm going to bring her back to uh, to life for us. So let's get you back here, Jackson. There she is. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, do I get the just, good word? Wait, do I get to say the good word? You get what? What is the good word that you would like to choose? Shahrazad. Okay, fair. I don't know what I that means. A, I think it's a fun word. It is a fun sure word. I still had hair. There wasn't any kind of like magic spell cast yeah, with yeah. that. I'm still, okay, good, good. So, just a quick background. Uh, Jackson has written several young adult uh, novels and recent fifteen. There you go. Yeah, there's there's your. I know exact it's a lot. Point. It's a lot. And then uh, her most uh, recent books are for Upper Elementary, her Ellie Engineer series. It's all three books are out right now. Uh, wink, wink, nod, nod. If you're looking for something for your elementary students to read, it's pretty, pretty good. Not going to lie. Saying. Just saying. I, I think saying. they're, you know. So uh, one of the reasons we wanted to bring you on is because, uh, Jackson, you spend a lot of time engaging young people in writing. It's something you've been doing more and more often. So we thought you'd be the perfect person to reach out to because you do this in a digital space uh, just as much as you do it in a physical space. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just to start off with, um, kind of what's your favorite way to engage young people in the writing process? Um, so I tend to think that a lot of people's approach to teaching writing tends to either target reluctant writers or avid writers. And while that is all well and good, I actually think those two groups have the same problem, which is I think that they have forgotten that writing is supposed to be fun. Right. Um, and I think that happens on the high school level and on the elementary level. I think uh, a lot of high schoolers have gotten it in their heads that writing is something, um, especially fiction writing, that like you have to suffer for. Like you have to hate yourself and you have to like sit in a cabin and think about darkness and suffering and then like type at night uh, and you know, think about your feelings. And I think on the elementary school side, I think it stops being fun because they get really caught up in like, did I do it right? Uh, did I do it right? Did I do it right? I wanna make sure I do it right. And so my approach to teaching writing to all age levels is to approach writing as play. Uh, so I tend to do a lot of like my most popular class that I teach online is one where we do it's called a three minute challenge and I give kids uh, two totally random words like pony and spaghetti and they have three minutes to write a three sentence short story based on those two words. And I always tell them that when they are finished, sometimes they will be very pleased with what they wrote and they'll be like, man, for three minutes, like that's pretty good. Sometimes they will be in the middle about what they wrote and sometimes what they write will be an absolute garbage fire. It will be a flaming dumpster with, you know, and once they hear that that's okay, they actually really hype on it. Um, and, you know, especially the young kids, when they hear that it can be a garbage fire and that's fine too, that the point is just to make a thing in your brain and show it to people, hmm. they're really into it. And on the high school end, I think once they hear that it can be a garbage fire, they let themselves relax a little bit and they let themselves kind of play with it and enjoy it. Um, so yeah, my approach is very much writing as play, that it is supposed to be an enjoyable thing and that often we have forgotten that uh, as we uh, you know, uh, struggle to teach writing in both an academic setting and also in a creative setting. I think sometimes the play aspect gets lost. Yeah. Uh, Glenn, I don't know about you, but I felt a little personally attacked with that whole brooding, right? Like the uh, yeah, right, like school. suffering. Yeah. Like yeah. I yes. my, yeah, I had to suffer mm -hmm. for my art as yeah. a, uh, writing my terrible teenage poetry. When yeah, I was that's <laughs> that's. But I think I did that too because I think that they're, um, especially at the time that um, I imagine uh, the three of us and also probably a lot of your viewers uh, were uh, growing up and reading, writers were a very unapproachable, unknown thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they were names on books that you, I mean, you didn't know what they looked like. There was like a 30 year old picture on the back of the book, but what even is that? And right. so I really like to uh, make people aware of the fact that like, you can like pink and unicorns and also write 
um, you know, young adult paranormal romance. Like it's not all about being miserable all the time. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I think that there's, um, it's not helped by the quantity of dead white guys in uh, traditional English education, okay? Or like yeah. semi-dead white guy authors. Yeah, yeah, um, that are brooding and miserable. I'm, I'm just very, saying. Very, wow. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we've, we've kind of set the wrong precedents there, haven't we? Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it is interesting. Like, you do kind of challenge the... Uh, the I think probably most people's perspective. It's it's fabulous purple hair. It's it's um, you know super energetic and outgoing and yeah, it definitely does challenge that like crusty, moldy suffering. <laughs> like when you sure. never talk about my hair, right? I never oh, get wait, a wait, shout wait. out. We talk about your hair, man. Just yeah. not when you're here. Oh, that's yeah, fair. Your hair. <laughs> that's All right sidetracked yeah. a little bit there so what advice might you give a writing teacher who is having to engage students digitally maybe for the first time right now um i would strongly recommend that if you can when you are getting feedback to do a video rather than tech, get nuance in that um, when you're giving text feedback. Um, so I think that's something to be aware of. Uh, I also recommend uh, if you are doing a video, um, try to have them actually be on screen with you again, because uh, critique and feedback is a back and forth. I don't, um, I think it's really difficult for uh, young writers, especially to get a paper full of feedback and process that in a useful way without having yeah. somebody there with them. So I think one-on-one, -on -one, uh, again, video feedback is really, really useful. And then some like, uh, these are these are actually sort of general, uh, I think maybe teaching tips, if you will, although I, I don't know that I'm qualified to give those, but um, keep in mind that if you're literally just sitting like this, there's no, there's no movement. Like when you're teaching in a classroom, you move because you're yeah. alive, yeah? yeah? And so I try to be aware that if I'm just sort of like sitting still talking, that it's not, um, <laughs> <laughs> that it is not as personal. So um, especially when I'm teaching like little uh, little ones, yeah. I, I mean, I do a lot of like leaning in to listen to them and they, they'll they lean in back, you know, and I do a lot of like everything I do, like when I'm excited, I'm like, ah, like how, you know, I can't believe Super you emotive. did that. Yeah. yeah. And um, because they're not, uh, you know, you're not there in the classroom with them for them to see yeah. that. So I try to make it as personal a connection as I can. And to be totally honest, I can accomplish in video feedback, like when I'm actually in a Zoom chat or whatever the meeting platform is, I feel like that takes less time than providing written feedback uh, anyway for me. Yeah. Um, uh, so for what it's worth, especially because written feedback, I'm always like, am I saying this right? I want to make sure they totally get that I'm not, you know, taking issue. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, especially I don't want to, you know, my, my absolute worst fear, both as a writer and a reader and a, uh, instructor and a person is that a kid will think they're a bad writer because of me and a lot of times kids uh, don't process things the way you think they will so having that face-to-face -face, I think is important that's a really really important deep like thought right there like my mind is sitting there turning over that yeah yeah exactly you want right? to lean in and think about yeah. it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't yeah, want them the, to think that they're a bad writer yeah. because of yeah. me yeah 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 All right, that's cool <laughs> very cool Go oh, hey, Thanks. that's uh, that's great. I mean, that's exactly what this is all about: is trying to give advice, and you are more than qualified because the point yes. is we're out there teaching. Yeah. Um, so I think that's one of the things that hopefully this show brings value is different voices from different spaces, and that's what we're excited about. You know, um, I'm so glad it's not just Excellent. me and Glenn because wow, that would yeah. be a lot for everybody. <laughs> so. Um, we really appreciate you uh, joining us. If you want to hang out for our little outro, outro piece here. Yes. I've forgotten how to talk today, apparently. We've done um, a lot. We like to share a couple of last little pieces of positivity with you, too. So, Glenn, do you want to share yours first? Yeah, definitely. So, this is um, totally not really teaching related, per se. Um, <laughs> it doesn't have to be. Let's see if I can find it. Yes. Okay. So, uh, this is Animal Crossing. And I don't know if you're living, well, actually, we all are living in caves right now. It's called isolation. But um, beside that, uh, Animal Crossing just came out on Nintendo. So this is something that probably 
uh, well, a lot of your, a lot of the students out there are playing Animal Crossing. Um, but this is something that's blown up across social media as well. Uh, and I, this has been an amazing opportunity for me just as a, as an outgoing extrovert social butterfly, I'm like losing my mind, um, not being able to, to talk to people as much as I, as I would like to believe it or not. And animal people in digital spaces. So I have a lot of teacher friends, um, that I follow on Twitter. And a lot of us actually got together last night in Animal Crossing uh, and we, we hung out on someone's island and uh, we told, I actually wrote a really bad haiku and left it on their island um, about, uh, let's see, existential dread and running out of food, I think was the little positive. This is haiku. the suffering it's, I was talking suffering. about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Suffering. 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 Even paradise. But, um, <laughs> but it, it's, it's a fantastic game. A lot of our students are playing it. So if you want a, a space where you can actually like interact with, um, your students, I've been taking some of the, some of the images and some of the little, uh, like headers and different animal characters and embedding them into my lessons and things like that. I've been like subtly dropping that I'm playing Animal Crossing. They've probably like picked up on that. But uh, yeah, it, I'm not saying it's like makes you kip teacher, but it's definitely an, a way to connect with students because this is where they are right now. And uh, I, I know like when we, when we do go back um, and when we do, I don't know, continue to figure out ways to interact with them, this is definitely something I'm gonna I'm gonna talk with them about. Um, it's just just my adventures on the island. So it's 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 a lot of fun. It's <laughs> a lot of man. I that game looks like it was made to me. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, I feel like I need to get one, but yeah. I yeah, I know. I yeah. It, yeah, I probably should. Especially it's, now. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. And I mean right. it's just it's I think that that's really important right now to find ways to 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 take your mind off of uh, everything that's going on right now. Like get off the yeah. news, get off social media and just, just relax and have fun. So um, mine is really just a piece of encouragement for teachers that I think are still in this weird space of how much, how little, what does it all look like? Jackson, you brought up something I think that was really powerful was just about feedback, right? If we can offer uh, students quality feedback, that, that, that's the learning piece that students will get, you know, let's, forget about the grade piece. So this is an NPR article. And the part that I like about it right here is with Luke uh, Waltzler and they bring up one of his tweets. He's a director at the Center of Teaching and Learning. Um, and so what uh, what he talks about here is this idea of a minimum viable uh, transition course of some kind. And I love the bullet points he kind of shares here about, you know, send students clear bulleted emails with things to do and the resources they need, include times that they can call you or otherwise kind of try to connect, uh, suggest benchmarks that don't require them, and then collect work via email and put into folders yourself if that's easier for them than getting on another platform. Um, cause, uh, unfortunately, like even Glenn, when you were talking earlier about like using Google classroom and then also having e-class, I mean, you can have yeah. all these great digital spaces, but that also can pull kids in too many directions and just create that uh, anxiety that we know that a lot of them are already feeling or, or exacerbated. Right. So, uh, just, I, I felt like those were really good, important pieces of advice. I agree. I, I think being flexible. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just yeah. being flexible. So, uh, so that's, that's really it for us this time around again, too. We really appreciate anybody who's actually watching and spending time with us. Jackson, thank you for spending time with us and, and giving us your words of wisdom. And uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll have you back if you would so, be so willing. <laughs> but I'm, I'm so busy. I'm going so, so many places. Uh, so, yeah, no, I would love to come back. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you for having me, though. Seriously, I appreciate it. All right. Cool. Well, thanks everybody out there. Continue. Good luck. Continue the, the, the good job you're doing out there. If you're a teacher, a parent, a student, whatever you may be, we're all in this together. Yep. Thank you guys.